Hello, everyone, and welcome to That Kind of Podcast. I'm Dia Kaplan. I am Jenny Olson Payton. And this week we have a solved murder, which I'm solved. very excited about. It was solved a little later. But it but was it's still technically solved. Yeah, it was. It's an. It's a really cool case that talks about how, like, when technology kind of continues, even though it can like reopen cold cases. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. I, and I'm really excited to hear about it. Yeah. Most yeah. of the time, our conversations about the cases, we say, "Oh, what are you going to do? Or what are you thinking about?" My first question always is, <laughs> "Is, is it, it solved? solved? And is it paranormal?" Yes. After that, I don't care. I'll find out. About and if it. I answer yes to either of those questions, my contract is null and void. Mm-hmm. She's yes. gonna have it. She's gonna have a new co-host next season. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, that kind of podcast, not Jenny Olson Payton. Exactly. Exactly. So we've had a little technical difficulties the last couple weeks. So mm-hmm. we've been releasing a little later. Our producers are <sighs> awful. We need to fire them. <laughs> We have um, terrible producers. <laughs> terrible producers. They're really good at doing the podcast. They just yes. can't produce it worth crap. No. So. Um, it shows up upside down. Yep. Just in still images. Yes. Yes. So. My bad. <laughs> yes. I am so sorry. It's okay. It's okay. We got this. We got this. You know, you roll with it. That's that's all you can do. Which is why we need you guys. Yeah. Like, like follow, subscribe, yep. do whatever you can. So we can hire a producer. and yeah. A good one. That's okay. not us. That's not us. So, all right, so today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite bands, which is the Gits. Um, I don't know if you've heard of them. Hmm, they were really big in the Seattle um, Seattle grunge music scene, even though their music was not really grungy. I mean, it was grungy, but it was mm-hmm. there was some heavy metal. I mean, there was a lot of, like, eclectic um, sounds that went with it. I'd probably like it, then. Yeah, I think you would. Um, so I'm going to talk about specifically Mia Zapata. Mia Zapata was the lead singer of the Gits, and she unfortunately passed away at the age of 27. Um, she was mm. part of the 27 Club mm. um, in just a really tragic way. Um, she was born in Louisville, Kentucky, and um, she ended up, um, was very affluent. Her family had a lot of money, and really? her dad actually said it was like she walked down two sides of the street. On one side, she had you know parochial school, she had tennis lessons, horseback riding and then on the other was this kind of grunge lifestyle where she did not really care about material things okay Okay. so by nine she was playing the um, guitar she was listening to just a ton of different music billy holiday jimmy reed Mm -hmm. sam cook Mm -hmm. um ray charles and she was really her music is very influenced by all of those people oh i'd love that yeah yeah you really i think you would so in 1984, um, Zapata ended up going to Antioch College in Ohio, um, and that's where she kind of met her tribe. She yeah. formed a band, The Gits, um, in 1986 with three other guys, uh, or three guys, and they became, you know, close, fast friends. Um, by 1989, they decided to go ahead and move to Seattle, where they became fully kind of ensconced in the Seattle grunge uh, movement. Um In order to make ends meet, she was, um, she didn't want to uh, contribute to the establishment. So she was working a lot of odd jobs and she was like a dishwasher and, um, you know, she was working at a a hotel as a dishwasher and just very much um, was writing music and was surrounded by that culture. Um, They moved into an abandoned house to kind of keep costs down um, and they referred to it as the rat house. Oh, wow. Yeah, as you can imagine. I don't want to know why. Now... No, not not at all. I mean, I remember I was like a grunge girl, and I was like, I thought that lifestyle was going to be so great. And now 44-year-old Jenny is like, that's dirty. <laughs> the rat house? Ew. <laughs> Somebody wash my flat. <laughs> I mean, like, where's the Lysol wipes? <laughs> oh, dang, I got something on my Doc Martin. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, that did not last long. I did not last long at all. Um. So between 1990 and 91, they kind of got some local, um, like, clout. They had released a couple of independent, a couple of releases on an independent label. Um, And then in 1992, their first album, um, Frenching the Bully, comes out. And um, (laughs) Frenching the Bully? Frenching the Bully. I think I like this album just based on on the name. Um, So two of their songs, uh, Second Skin and Another Shot of Whiskey, are from that album. I'm totally down for this Yeah, totally, totally down. Um, they teamed up with um, Seven Year Bitch, and they did a lot of touring, um, playing the same shows. Um, and the um, lead singer of Seven Year Bitch and um, Zapata were very close friends. Mm. 
1993, they released their second and final album, unfortunately, after she had passed away. Oh, um, no. Yeah. They, um, <laughs> and this is called Enter the Conquering Chicken. <laughs> so, <laughs> great names, great names. <laughs> Um, this one had a, had a cover of Sam Cooke's A Change Is Gonna Come, oh. um, as well as Precious Blood, two of their famous songs. And then um, the re-release had my favorite song, which is Whirlwind, um, on it, um, which is which is if you're going to start, start, start there. It's, okay. it's a great song. Um, so then uh, so on July 7th, 1993, Mia ended up leaving the Comet Tavern on the Cap Capitol Hill area of Seattle. She walked the one block to her apartment. Um, she was renting a studio apartment in the basement. The rat um, house wasn't cutting the rat, it anymore. The rat house wasn't cutting it anymore. Um, but she went up a couple of flights of stairs to visit a friend that was in the same apartment building. That was the last time she was seen alive. Um, mm -hmm. They don't know what exactly happened. She had mentioned earlier in the night she was looking for a guy she had been dating. She was like going to run to maybe a couple friends' houses and see if he was hanging out there. I mean, life we're talking before text messages. Life before text messages. We're talking. We're talking the '90s grunge. I mean, like it's just kind of a floating. Yeah. You know, everybody just kind of ended up in everybody's houses. Yeah. Um. So they're not. They're not quite sure what happened. Um. When she went to visit that friend, that was the last time she was seen alive. Um. She, a sex worker ended up finding her body at three thirty in the morning, oh. near the intersection of Twenty Fourth Avenue South and South Washington. Street. So she was found really quick. She was found. They they think that the attack happened about two fifteen. So wow. she was found really quick. She was not, um, she did not have any identification on her. Oh. Um, but oddly enough, the medical examiner had been to a concert a few weeks previous and recognized her. What are the chances? I know. And then proceeded to call her bandmates and were like, guys, I'm so sorry. This is one of the worst calls, but you need to come identify her. It's your lead singer. Oh, wow. Yeah. Um, so she was actually beaten. She was raped and she was oh. strangled with the um, cords of her Git sweatshirt that she was wearing. Oh. Um, they did say that had she not been strangled, she probably would have died from her injuries and her internal and internal injuries. She from being beaten? She was from being beaten so bad. The amount of anger that would take. Yeah. Yeah. I just, it breaks my heart. Um, so she was buried at Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville. Mm. Um, after she passed away, the Seattle music industry, or the Seattle music kind of scene all came together. Um, we're talking Nirvana. We're talking, you know, Pearl Jam um, came together and raised seventy thousand dollars to wow. hire a private investigator to try to figure out what happened. Because the police weren't Could, trying. Or no, they were there trying. Was just, there was just nothing. There was um, there was no semen. There was no fingerprints. There was no nothing. She was just yes murdered. And she was murdered. Her head. There was, and this is how she ended up being caught. The killer ended up being caught. She had been bitten, and so they were able to do a DNA. Um, swab and mm -hmm. freeze it, but the technology was not there to truly identify who the killer was. Okay. Um, but they saved it, so good on them. They for... saved it. Yep. Same. But so in in nineteen in, in nineteen ninety eight, mm -hmm. it was actually the police. One of the police um, lieutenants was quoted in saying that we're no closer to solving this than oh. we were when it happened. So the um, private investigator worked for the three years on that seventy thousand dollars, and after the money had dried up, she actually took her own time. And continued oh. to work on trying to find who killed her. Oh. Yeah. Um, so we're going to now fast forward to 2003. Okay. Okay. Um, Florida fisherman Jesus Mesquia was arrested in connection to the murder of Mia Zapata. Um, it turned out that the bite, the DNA um, technology had kind of caught up and they were able and to. They ran it. They ran it and they were able to. Ha -ha, take yes. that. So he maintained his innocence because, after all, he's in Florida. Um, but he... His DNA is on a yep. bite on her body. And he had an indecent exposure charge in Seattle the same time. Within two weeks. A uh, two-week time period of her death. Every... What? I know. Every girlfriend, every significant other he had, had brought him up on on domestic violence charges. That's scary. It's very scary. And if you but look at him... But it fits the bill. Yeah. So I saw... First of all, I saw just his headshot. And he doesn't mm -hmm. look like a large man. But then I saw a actual picture of him being walked out by two, probably five, nine, six foot, you know, guys. Mm -hmm. And um, he's huge. And so that explains how he oh, could have happened. done so much damage yep. to. Yep. So, yeah. Wow. And even though he maintained his innocence, the prosecutors believe that he came upon her at about 2.15. It was said that she was wearing headphones. So um, 2.15 in the morning, maybe not being able to hear something happening. Yeah. 
um, that he grabbed her, he threw her in the back of his car and proceeded to beat, rape, and strangle her there. Which is why, as women, you're always encouraged to not have both headphones in so you can hear. Yeah. So it was completely random. So he didn't really know no. her. There was nothing to it other than There's nothing to connect. Yeah, nothing to connect the two. They think they might have seen, he might have seen her walking out of the tavern and followed her a little bit and then. Maybe thought she was yeah. vulnerable. And, yeah. Wow. Her. But it wasn't him. I mean, no, allegedly, if it was him. Oh, of course not. Of course not. I just bit her. I didn't, <sighs> I didn't kill her. So he was um, he was sentenced to thirty seven years. Good. He actually appealed it and was What's that? sentenced to thirty six years. Why? I don't know because I imagine because he'd already served a year by the time the appeal. So I know. I know. So I mean, I'd be like just just for the negotiation, I'd be like, I'm giving you thirty eight, asshole. Yes. You know? I feel you like wasted that's our fair. time. Mm-hmm. Thirty eight. Yeah. Um, you care to ask again? We can keep going. <laughs> yeah. Do we make it forty? <laughs> Um, he died in Washington Hospital on January 21st, 2021. So he just recently, just recently. died. Good. Yep. Yeah. Yep. I'm okay with that. Yep. So after the murder, um, her friends ended up forming a uh, self-defense group called Home Alive, in which they taught oh. women how to protect themselves using pepper spray, martial arts, um, self-defense, all of that. That's nice. um, they have benefit concerts. And again, Nirvana, Pearl Jam, big names were involved oh. in this movement. Um, Joan Jett even um, recorded a song with the surviving members of um, the Gits, and they went under the name of Evil Stigs, which means Gits live, uh, Gits live backwards. Okay. Okay. Um, So Joan Jett. That's very cool of her. Yeah. So yeah, Joan Jett. Joan Jett was. It was. I guess they were friends. They had been friends. Mm-hmm. Um, Joan Jett and Kathleen Hanna, who was the lead singer of Bikini Kills, mm-hmm. and what is it, uh, Le Tigra? Uh, uh, yeah, Le Tigra. I, I'm not super familiar, but I know. Yeah. What you're they wrote a song um, called "Go Home" that was um, about a woman being stalked, um, and then the video when it was released, it was a woman being stalked, but instead of getting killed, she was able to fight back and defend herself Ooh. in her honor. That had to be incredibly difficult to oh. film and to talk about and discuss. Yeah, I can only imagine. Um, there was, it's, it was described as, a, her death was described as like a huge defeat in the Seattle community because you're thinking a group of close-knit people. And, you know, I, I kind of like liken it to like biker gangs. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of like everybody was part of this movement. They all kind of looked out for each other. Yeah. And, you know... It just, it well, there was a huge sense of community. And um, the Seattle Times actually said it was the moment that Seattle scene lost its sense of invincibility, um, which mm. I love. And this is a quote, I want to make sure I get it right, from Kristen Storm. She recalls that Zapata's death was a reality check. They were all very tough people, and as a group of women, they were all really strong, outspoken, and hard-hitting. Very opinionated women, and that perception of we are not victims at all in any way, and this can't happen to women who aren't victims. Mm. And I think Zapata's death shattered that myth for us and showed that it can happen to all types of women. So um, there was a lot of just sadness and sense of loss in that community. Um, and I, I love the fact that they were really um, tried to reclaim some of it with the home alive. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and they kind of tried to take something so tragic and teach so many women that it can't happen to anybody. And even though you're not a victim, you can be victimized. Mm-hmm. But that doesn't mean that that it defines you by any stretch. So mm. um, the weird thing is, and, and her friends really want her to focus on people remembering her and the spirit mm-hmm. and how she connected people um, instead of her murder. So they really try to focus on that. And one of her bandmates says it it's really has been odd because she has been almost martyred to the fact that like she is this like picture of feminism and picture of um you know the archetypal archetype of the the feminist woman and the feminist guy or grunge and he's like no she was just mia you know she would she was not involved in feminism and all that stuff i mean she wasn't active in any she wasn't she was a strong powerful woman but she wasn't like i am a feminist yeah. or anything like that so he's he's always thought that it's been very odd that she's almost been kind of martyred to that cause um but all in all, it sounds like um, she was a very talented musician and that Seattle really lost a, um, it would have been really incredible to see how far she would have gone. Yeah. And it's it's very unfortunate that the 27 Club, you know, had another one. That club. I tell you what. 
tell you what, yeah, it's it's crazy. I mean, when you think of some of when you think of what the music could have been. I mean, yeah. we got Kurt Cobain. I still remember when Kurt Cobain, the day that Kurt Cobain died. Mm -hmm. You know, um, you got Jimi Hendrix. You got Mama Cass. I mean, Amy Winehouse. Amy Winehouse. Uh, River Phoenix. Yeah. I mean, when you think about all that talent that was cut so short, and you know, and they've left us with like. I don't know. I, I'm trying to think holes. of holes. Yeah. Basically holes where they Yeah. Yeah, where they were. Should be. Yeah, I'm like I'm like, but you, you we still have bands like I'm trying to think of a really awful band, but I'm sure I can think of several, but <laughs> we're they, not gonna slander anybody. Well, yeah. They might want to sponsor us, so we can't That's say awesome. that. That's awesome. So That's yeah, really, so it's unfortunate. Well, I think that the whole the whole grunge scene, a lot of it is women kind of taking back what we had lost through the years yeah. of, hey, this is who I am. This is how I feel. I'm not only am I going to sing about it, I'm not going to be ashamed about yeah. it. So I can get how they don't look at her as this icon. But I think, I mean, you look at Joan Jett and mm -hmm. she is an icon. She's a bad so, bitch. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone that was in there singing their truth to the public about it. I mean, good for you. You've already become an icon. So I can kind of see how she became this yeah. martyr for it because all of a sudden you're singing, we're powerful, we're strong, we're taking it back. And yeah. then someone brutally just, takes that back from yeah. you. In an entire movement. Yeah. It's just, it's it sucks. But it's it would have been interesting to see how far she could have gone. Yeah. So I'm going to have to listen to their music. Yeah. I'm very excited. It sounds, I've never heard of them, but it sounds yeah. right up my alley. It is very, I found, I, I was probably, it was probably late high school when I discovered them, maybe early college, um, back when I was kind of in the grunge, but, and then I rediscovered him. I, I forgot about him for a while and, um, had listened to another podcast that had covered her case and, and rediscovered him. And, um, yeah, there's something very unusual about her voice that, just makes it something to remember. I like that. So, yeah. All right. So everybody, like, follow, and subscribe. Please do. But then also, listen to the Gets music. Listen to the Gets music. Yeah. And yeah. Let us know what you think. Yep. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Have a great day, guys. See you later.